Hey guys, today is an exciting day because I am driving my first EV and it is the Hyundai Kona E-Max. We've been here for about an hour already. This is the charge EV charging station, which is actually an AC charging station. So we have charged about uh, one hour and 30 minutes right now. And the charges is about uh, two ringgit per 10 minutes, which is actually pretty affordable. Okay, so we are up from 65% to 73%, which is actually not a lot to be honest. So that's actually hit the thing about using an AC charger like this, which is so affordable. So you only get about a total of 8% of additional power when you charge for about an hour, which is actually pretty slow. And the total cost for charging is 16 ringgit, which is very, very affordable. And I'm not going to complain about it. Driving an EV for the first time is similar to owning a new smartphone. You drive the car out of the dealership, zip it around town and pick up friends for a joyride and when the battery runs low, you start to panic on where to find the nearest wall socket or charging station to juice it up to the mileage that you want to travel next. But these things are sadly still not very accessible yet in Malaysia and even if you manage to find a charging station, it will require some time to charge it up to the mileage that you want to travel next. Well, that sounds like a lot of trouble owning an EV in Malaysia. However, after driving the Hyundai Kona EV for the past 24 hours, I think I can manage that trouble. And here's why I think that the Hyundai Kona EV is one of the best options if you want to own an entry electric car in Malaysia. Unlike many other EVs, I like that the Kona Electric doesn't try too hard to look like an EV with some funky futuristic aesthetic and it looks very much like the regular version on the front face, just without the company's face grille, which looks really cute and the rear looks similar to the regular Kona. The variant that I got from Hyundai is the maxed out E-Max variant, which comes with a 64kWh battery capacity that delivers up to 484km of mileage on a single charge. The 150 kilowatt electric motor can ultimately produce 205 PS and 395 newton meters of maximum torque. Hyundai quotes that it could get from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 7.9 seconds, but it definitely feels faster than that when I slam on the throttle. As a B-segment compact SUV, the Kona can easily transport five Asian-sized adults under six feet with some leg space and headroom to spare. However, Unlike the regular petrol variant, you do lose out a significant amount of boot space owing to the battery and it can only take on 332 liters of items. As you can see, storing an e-scooter has taken up pretty much all of the boot space and you will need to fold down the seats if you want more storage space. The Kona Electric's compartments are however very generous. You get a decent sized armrest storage compartment and glove box. There's two cup holders on the center console and you can place more things below it which is overall a very thoughtful design. The Kona Electric features the very same 8-inch infotainment system as the Petro variant that supports wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It is paired with a decent 6-speaker system that produces detailed audio and wide soundstage. I encountered no issues and have been very impressed with its smooth UI. Compared to the regular Kona's head unit, this one gets an additional EV app that gives very insightful information of how the car consumes the battery, the estimated distance per full charge based on the driving patterns, and a history of eco-driving. I really love the heads-up display that keeps me focused on the road. It shows driving speed, blind spot and lane departure warnings, and music information. While the superb 10.25-inch LCD instrument panel is very cool and changes themes as you switch between drive modes. The animations and transitions are very smooth and I never had an issue getting around with the car settings. In other great interior tech conveniences, the Kona Electric has a Qi wireless charging pad which I would only recommend charging wireless earbuds instead of smartphones, and two USB ports located on the front and back that supports fast charging. The Kona Electric comes fitted with Hyundai SmartSense autonomous safety features that many will appreciate. For instance, I love that it reminds me to check the rear seat when I turn off the car and I've left something behind. It also tells me when the car in front has started moving when I'm not paying attention. And it has a really smart cruise control feature that works together with the lane follow assist feature that kind of makes it drive on its own. But do note that this is not a full autonomous driving feature and you will need to keep your hand on the steering as it doesn't work on extreme curvy roads. Since the Kona Electric doesn't have much moving parts like a regular Kona, it is an extremely silent car that would go unnoticed by someone. But thankfully, 
Hyundai has included some safety features such as a tone when reversing the car and an electric sound as the car moves. Compared to a regular petrol automobile, the Kona Electric is one zippy animal and every time I accelerate, I feel that surge of power coming into the drive and it's such a joy to not hear a roaring engine revving up to reach to your desired speed. The car has excellent driving dynamics which you wouldn't feel as bumpy when driving on uneven Malaysian roads and it tackles sharp corners like a champ at speeds of 80km per hour. The power efficiency of the Kona Electric is similar to how you would drive a petrol car. The more consistent your cruising speed is, the more mileage you get on a single charge. You push the throttle more, you will see the mileage go down significantly. One benefit over regular cars is that it has regenerative braking that can offer some additional juice when you slow down the car or going down the queue, which is very useful if you are always stuck in a traffic jam as it consumes very little power when it remains stationary. I managed to get an average efficiency of 9kWh per kilometer with 250km of mileage, which covers 80% of highway and 20% of city driving. When it's time to charge the Kona Electric, this is where I will have to get familiar with the available charging stations around town and the respective charging wattage. It can get very stressful for any first-time EV owners if your car runs low on power. Though thankfully, there is an app for locating charging stations here and it's called PlugShare. But the real problem here is that there are so many different charging station providers and just like e-wallets, you need to switch between them and sign up accounts. Payment chargers varies in every location as well. And worse still, charging stations here might not be well maintained in certain places, such as this mall that I visit which only has two charging stations working out of seven and the next charging station could be in the next part of town which you don't want to risk if there is a similar incident. Hyundai does provide a complimentary home charger with the Kona Electric but you really don't want to use it in urgent situations as it charges painfully slow at 1.2 kilowatts. So it's best that you invest in a home charging station which Hyundai sells a 7 kilowatt and 22 kilowatt AC charging station for 6,000 ringgit and 7,000 ringgit respectively. Ultimately, the learning curve about driving the Kona Electric is really about making sure that you have sufficient power to cover the mileage to your next destination. You will also need a travel plan to stop by charging stations to charge the car when it is necessary. And most importantly, you also need the time to wait for the car to get charged. It is a discipline that will eventually become a habit, which is rather similar to filling up your car before going on a road trip. Overall, the Hyundai Kona EV is a really nice electric SUV to drive and I really enjoyed it despite its shortcomings. This is definitely one of the best electric SUVs that you can get right now and this Emax variant here costs about 205,000 ringgit which to be honest for its size is actually a little pricey out there but this is actually a CPU unit and there isn't really a lot of electric cars going on right now so due to that limited supply of course this car it's going to be a bit pricey but if you value the benefits of owning an electric car such as not having to pump fuel but you know to pump electric all the time to charge it up well if you really appreciate all that yep this is a really good option all right so that's all for my thoughts on the hyundai kona ev let me know yours in the comment section down below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos coming right up and we'll see you in the next one